Hey, what's up guys? So I put up a poll and about 97 of you said you wanted to see data stores. So that's what we're gonna do. This is the data module that I like to use. I usually use profile service, but that's a little outdated. So I'm updating the profile store. And so if you just get the documentation here and the module here, I can uh, go to the tutorial, grab some basic usage, just a code template we'll use in a second, and I'll get the model. Let's hop into studio. All right, so I just made a new game and I'm gonna publish it. All this uh, data store video, turn off all this junk and create. And the first thing I wanna do is go into the game settings here, turn on API services. All right, so now I'm gonna create a script to just uh, load some modules. Cool. In data service here, I'm gonna add another module script under it. And actually, no data service is going to contain all this information here. And we're just going to return a little table. And I'm going to go into the toolbox. I'm going to grab the profile store module script. That should throw it in here. I'm going to throw it under my data service, not the spawn. And I'm going to add another module script here. And this will be a profile template. I like to have the profile template in a separate. Uh, module. And then what I'm going to go do is, so we've got this uh, tutorial template that Lawlers has given us. I'm going to set the profile template as profile template. I'm going to set profile store up here as script dot profile store. And if we Look in here, we can see this is where we load each profile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple functions real quick. I'm gonna say uh, profile loaded player player profile. And, and then I'm just gonna convert everything that was in here into here. And I'm gonna say profile loaded there we go and if we run and we play you'll be able to see that profile was loaded so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add in my template i'm going to have log in times set, set it to zero so what i'm going to do is every time we log in we're just going to increase the number of login times and we should see that Okay, so I made a little mistake. You got to say profile.data to access the data. There's a bunch of uh, metadata in the profile that I didn't even realize was there. So if I do this, it should say we've logged in zero times. And then if we rejoin again, it should say we've logged in one time. There we go. See, so we've got um, data stores up and going already. Okay, so profile store is just one solution to data store, and I want to walk through how we can uh, add depth to this implementation. So first thing I want to do is I want to walk through our data service script here that we just made, um, and really we just copy pasted, and I want to go through and reformat it, and just kind of um, through that get a feel of what we've got going on here. So I like to put all my services at the top, and I'm going to add a little header here. So it seems like what we're doing here is we're creating a new store with the key player store. I assume this is like a data store. Um, and I've added this profile loaded function, and this is where we'll handle some loading functionalities that I'll introduce in a minute. So we add a player. Uh, we get a profile by starting a session using the user ID. And we're going to cancel when the parent isn't in players. Okay, that makes sense. And then... If we don't have a profile, when we look for it, it's going to add a user ID to that profile. Okay. And this is for uh, data removal compliance, which is nice. And uh, we're going to update missing variables. And then when the session's over, we're going to null the profile and we're going to kick the player. If the parent's players, then we're going to load the profile. Uh, otherwise, the player hasn't joined and the profile uh, wasn't fully loaded. So we're just going to end the session. And then... If there's not a profile, then we're going to kick them. And that's reasonable. I mean, you can kick the player every now and then. The system isn't bulletproof. 
I'm going to spawn player added for all the players in case this was a little late. And when they're removing, we're going to end the session if there's not a profile. And then I just kind of return nothing here. Uh, I'll add data service. I'll add a table here for any methods. Okay, so I guess I got a little understanding of it. What I want to do now is add something that I really like to use in all of my games. And I like to call this an attribute section in my profile. And what this is, is that if we put an attribute in here, like um, player level or region or something like that, but let's say, uh, let's just write clicks in here. And we'll set it to zero. And what I like to do is I like to set up this system here where when the player's profile is loaded, I'm going to say player set attribute ID to value. So all I've done here is when the player loads in, we're going to set the value of each attribute to the value that's stored. And whenever the attribute is updated, we're going to save that state to the attributes. So that means if I play the game, we should see that over here under my player, I should have a clicks zero attribute. If I switch to the server here where I can change the amount in a server context and we set it to 10 and we stop. And then if we come back in and we run again, we should note that our player has clicks of 10. I just realized I forgot to mention why this attribute system is powerful. Um, Anything like cash or um, location in the world, level, experience, anything that's a number, it's really nice because you can interface with the player with other services like a leveling service or a hunger management service or something like that. You can interface with the player and adjust that. And because the player is replicated, the interface can, or your, your user interface on the client can um, read changes from the player that happens on these attributes and update UI. And then if you want to change stuff on the server, you can update these attributes and it all gets synced up and it all gets stored. And you don't have to worry about, you know, saving after you change a value. It just all gets automatically saved, automatically stored, and you don't have to worry about a thing. Okay, so that's the uh, attribute paradigm that I like to add to my profile. And the other thing that I like to add is I like to add some events. And so I will get a bindable event and bindable function. And this is get data key and set data key. And I'm going to add them up here. So the next thing I want to add is these get data key and uh, set data key methods. And what I like to do is I like to have a very clear way that you can only get and set with the profile. So there's only one way to get data and only one way to receive data. And um, basically what that means is that there's not going to be any, you know, fuddling around with various functions that go in and tamper with the profile. It's, you know, one route and all services can use this. So what's really nice is let's say you have an inventory service. You can get the data key for the inventory items and update that, and it'll only update the inventory. Or you can get the data key for maybe some statistics or something like that. And you can update all that statistics information, and you don't have to tamper with um, the whole profile. You're just going to get sent a version of the key. And I'll explain it in a minute. Okay, so I just quickly wrote it. So uh, when we set a value a key, and obviously in a more true to form implementation, you're gonna add checks that ensure the key is a string and that your value that you input matches the type of the value that you're overwriting. But for now, I just have a simple implementation. And essentially all we do is we get the profile and we set the key to a value. Essentially this one sets a value at a key, this one gets the profile, and returns a value to a key. And there's only one way in, one way out. All right, so let's <clears throat> let's write an implementation for these two things that um, we've extended our data module to. So what I wanna do is I wanna show how you can interface um, between the attributes. So for like leader stats and um, how you would like increment it and adjust it. And then as well, I wanna do an example of how you would access those keys using the bindable event and bindable function. So I'm gonna write that and then I'm gonna just talk about my implementation. Okay, 
Okay, so I've written an implementation here that describes how we can interface with the attributes and the attributes can uh, then interface with client side things such as leader stats. So here I have a point block service which just hooks into some proximity prompts on some parts and it adds points to the player's point tally. And then here in the player service, I've created leader stats and I've hooked in the points value such that when it updates, it'll update the leader stat. And my data service will take care of uh, setting and saving those attributes. And essentially, all we have to do is update the attribute. And by writing this uh, leader stats um, connection between the leader stats in the game and then these attributes, um, it's really easy to add more leader stats and connect in with more attributes. So if we play here, we'll see that I've already been testing it, so I have six points. But if we go over, I can add points. I can remove points. Right, let's go down into the negatives. And then we'll stop. And if we come back, we should have negative six points. Perfect. It all hooks into the attribute. So if I look at my player and I play, I should see that I can remove points and add points. It all updates in the attribute. Okay, so I'm here in my game, Tycoon Wars. Uh, that I was working on for a little while. And in the game, I've added achievements. And so, you know, get some kills, level up, get some wins, uh, get sword kills, this is playing games. And you can see there's achievements on the top here and they have requirements and such. And this is something that gets saved to the data store. So if we stop the game and we take a look at our achievement handler, when we start in the default profile, you can see that Unlocked achievements are here. You can see that when we unlock achievement, we set the achievement ID as the key and true is the value. If we look in our <clears throat> achievement handler here, when the client completes an achievement, it's going to ping to the server requesting to check if there's achievement data. If there's not, then we'll return. And then we will check that the achievement attribute's been reached. So we're going to look at some achievement data and we're going to read it off the player and we're going to see if it matches. And then we use the data key get here to get the cached achievements. And then if we've already unlocked it, then we won't do anything. And then what we'll do is we'll get the achievement data that we've gotten here and perform the on complete function, which will reward the player with any kind of reward that we've provided. And then we will set the ID to true. And then what we'll do is we'll overwrite the data using set data key. And that's really how that one works. And if we look here, adding a sword to the inventory, it'll get the current state of what items are in your inventory. So that's items here. And it's the same kind of thing where we have different categories, but it's um, once you've unlocked it, you have the key and a value of true. And so it gets the current items. And if we're adding a sword, then it just says that items swords and then the sword id is set to true and then we're going to apply changes sword to the item state now this is a wrapper and all it does is it just updates the desired sub content in the item state and then it will overwrite the data key and fire to the client just to make sure that everything's synced up okay so that was just a little glimpse into data stores and how i set things up in my games and some ideas that you could use in your own games Obviously, if I didn't go into detail or you guys have questions about um, more, you know, down to earth things, or if you want me to get more into the nitty gritty of the data store, let me know down in the comments below. Like always, good video, bad video, let me know, and I hope everybody has a good day.